Hey, Shalom, all praise is due to you. How about Hashem, Yahweh Shah, double under city apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom, salutations to you brothers out there pushing the words of truth and sincerity. I'm Rapal Moff, and the video today I'm going to go into is the whole Nipsey hustle, um, death, sudden death situation, death angels, whatever you call it. But I'm going to go into a little difference in how. You see a whole bunch of people pretty much gathering for the same response that, you know, it was a shock, he didn't deserve it, and just the fact that so many multitudes of all people out there is, um, strongly have strong feelings towards this, right? Being that the dude is trying to do something positive as opposed to um, the typical rapper not caring about nobody, but he still got bodied. And um, nobody's seen it coming, right? Except for the Lord. So, it reminds me of the fact that the majority of people are always late. The majority of all people is always late. Just like they late to the fact that, um, you know, to give somebody their flowers while they can still smell them. Um, and now that when somebody's gone, when it's too late, then people choose to uh, show you know speak out on how great somebody was or how um, much they love somebody and you, all people is known to do things when it's too late it's very reminiscent of the fact how they going when it's too late seek after the lord when it's too late they're going to hear our warnings when it's too late they're going to want to um know about the lord know about his name when you read about the 10 wise the five wise versions and the five foolish versions of Matthew's 25th chapter it's a parable about um, the portion of our people who won't turn back to the Lord before the time he he returns and the portion of the people who are foolish and, and or and wise who did turn back to the Lord um, before he returns so as a timing you know somebody who wanted to tell us this man Nipsey and tell him how much he appre they appreciate him. For them to do it now, the timing's off. He ain't around to get that. Um, very similar to your timing. Two thirds of our people's timing gonna be off because when the Lord returns, that's also gonna be sudden. Just like death, the Lord's return is something that the majority of people ain't looking for. Just like when he died and passed and they didn't expect to wake up to that news. The majority of people, when the Lord shows up, ain't going to be ready for it. It's going to be already too late. And it's funny how death and birth and, and, or, or a return in the same sense is so similar. And so the time is not revealed when Yahweh Shah is going to return. Just like the time of your death is not revealed to you. The time of Yahweh Shah's return is not revealed. If you go to Matthew 24 and 36, it says, but of that day. An hour, no, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So Yahweh Shai himself, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, doesn't even know the time that he's going to return to wreak havoc on the earth and pay vengeance on the earth, uh, according to the, the perfect judgment of the Lord instead of the kingdom of heaven. The Yahweh Shai himself doesn't even know this, this time. Mark thirteen and thirty two says, "But of that day and that hour, no, of no man." No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Acts 1 and 7 says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. So we know now that the Lord's uh, return is not revealed. We don't know. Just like the depth, death of Nipsey. You can't tell this man anything no more. He can't hear you. All right. He's an angel in the spiritual world. All right, and he's got a whole new mission now, and so whatever you wanted to share with him in his air, it's too late. Well, Yahweh Shai, you don't know when he's coming back. You're supposed to seek him early, speak, seek him while it's still time before the evil days come draw nigh. All right, the Lord Yahweh Shai, when he does return, it's going to be soon and suddenly. First Thessalonians 5 and 1 says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. A thief is unexpected. A thief comes suddenly. 
A thief does not warn you when he's coming. So similar to the thief, similar to death, comes Yahweh Shah, meaning suddenly. It says, so cometh a thief in the night. All right, so that's how we can expect Yahweh Shah to return. It says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. How else is a child born? When does a child actually arrive? To the very day they don't know. They tell you around this time we're expecting it. But truthfully, it all comes suddenly because the woman will be in the middle of cooking. She'll always be cleaning the house. She'll always be doing whatever the hell she was doing. And then a water breaks. Boom. Then those contractions start happening. Boom. Boom. And then they come suddenly. Boom. That's how the destruction of this society is going to be. Right along with the return of Yahweh Shah. There's going to be a lot of chaos going on in this world. And then Yahweh Shah is going to show up. It goes on to say. It says. As a tra travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. So we are also ready. For that day of the Lord. Not to come suddenly and unexpected, and as, sudden, as, as suddenly and unexpected it will be, we are already prepared and looking forward to that day. So we're in a different lot than the um, majority of people who pretty much are like uh, fans of Nipsey, wishing they had another day to um, make amends and say what they want. The whole suspense of this life and the whole suspense of being in this truth that you don't actually know how long you have until the Lord shows up to the day. But you start now preparing for that day. All right. Matthews 24, 37 says, but as the days of Noah were, we all know our forefather Noah, who all mankind stems from, all mankind are offspring of. And so Noah was uh, sent to prophesy about rain. Before it ever rained on the earth, thousands of years ago, Noah was sent to prophesy to the people about rain. And so everybody heard, and the majority of them mocked, laughed, okay, because rain, it was such a, uh, it, it, it never happened before. It was unbelievable, right? Who is this man? Who is this weirdo saying these things about water coming from the sky? So the Lord tested out Noah's faith he had them go out had Noah go out there look crazy say things prophesy and say things that were to come that never happened before similar to our situation now and once the rain came it, the doors were sealed his ark was built and only eight souls survived out of all humankind that was on the earth at that time and so the scripture in Matthew 24 relates that till net to now it says but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be we are in that time so just like the days of noah people not hearing the prophet noah people not listening people laughing people mocking okay people hating while noah was getting that ark built laughing him what is look what he's spending his money on his time on come party with us they were just laughing but guess what that's like today now all right, the men of the Lord, the prophets of the Lord out here telling about Yahweh Shah, his return, get right. We're laughed at, man. We're mocked at, man. We're spiritually building this ark that people can't understand why we're wasting our time with. Verse 38 says, For that, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. And you see that here now today. The partying doesn't stop. The drinking, enjoyment. The mirth, the fun, the bullshit doesn't stop. The marrying, all right? That pure ecstasy and celebratory lifestyle. The bliss of, 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 of our, the minds of the people in America and all throughout the world is just set on complete pleasure. Pleasure seeking, pleasure driven. Nothing's changed. It says, until the day... That Noah entered into the ark. And that's when things all went downhill from there. Because Noah entered. 
seven more souls entered his three children and their wives and Noah's wife and that was all that entered and were delivered it says and knew not verse 39 and knew not until the flood came and then and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be so what can we learn from that is that Yahweh Shah's return is very similar to Noah's the flood to Noah's flood how that a certain amount will be delivered but the majority unbelieving will be destroyed okay and this is all at the coming of Yahweh Shah because when he comes back just like in the days of Noah Yahweh Shah is going to come back and judge and destroy. He's part of a force. He's part of a, a, a fleet with his host of angels with him. An army, if you will, of the Lord to, rain, to, to reap all types of wrath on in judgment on the souls here, still here, that's still alive. The unbelieving souls while delivering the elect. Just like how Noah was delivered and saved from the flood, you're going to have the elect in this day delivered and saved from this thermonuclear flood. All right. Now, the book of Luke 17 and 28 says, likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Now, think of all these things that they did in Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighboring cities during the days of Lot, similar to the days of Noah, eating, drinking, enjoying itself, you're buying, you're selling, you're planting, you're building. They just built the largest complex, uh, uh, residential um, building space in U.S. history right up the, right not too far from here in uh, Midtown Manhattan. This is happening all over again. It says, but verse 29 but the same day that lot went out of sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all what does that tell you that your plans your plans have no bidding or, or no cannot help you one and your plans are, are, are irresponsible small trivial accomplishments and small light things to the lord's will they it's like a feather standing against a bull they're easily going to be trampled down just like in the days of noah just like in the days of lot verse 29 but the same day that lot went out of sodom it rained fire and brimstone so the same day yahweh shah returns what's going to happen i'm going to read on and destroyed them all even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So what can we tell you? Once again, the Son of Man, Yahweh Shah's return is so sudden. It's almost like the flood coming in. It's so sudden. It's like the time when Sodom and Gomorrah was pelted with nu nuclear fire. What else is the son of, uh, the coming of Yahweh Shah uh, like? In the book of Matthew 24 and 27. It says, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When you see lightning strike, you can't tell yourself, all right, five, four, three, here it comes, two. It doesn't work like that. Lightning strike, boom. You're on the opposite end. You're always on the latter end of that lightning strike. All right. It probably strikes before you even seen it. It's finished already back into it already hit the destination before you even got a chance to uh, put together in your mind what just the hell happened. OK, lightning's quick. It's suddenly. So we're getting the picture here. The coming of Yahweh Shai is going to be abrupt and sudden, just like death, just like the what they call the untimely death of man. So is the Yahweh Shai's return. Lastly. In the book of John 21 and 20, it says, Then Peter, turning about, see if the disciple whom Yahweh loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Yahweh Lord, and what shall this man do? Yahweh saith unto him, If I will tarry, 
if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that what is it to thee? Follow thou me. You see, so Yahweh is basically plainly saying he's going to return. He's plainly saying, if I will that he tarry till I come. He's plainly saying he's going to return. Hebrews 10 and 37 tells you, for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and not tarry. That tarrying means waiting a long time. So when Yahweh Shah says, uh, uh, till I come, he's talking about his second coming. And what are we all waiting for? That second coming. How is it going to come? Suddenly. Does anybody know the time? Only the Father in heaven. Just like death. Revelations 22 and 7. Behold, I cometh quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So you want to be blessed, all right? You want to be the person who gave, like, in an analogy, you're, it's like you're the person who knew Nipsey would die. <laughs> and the whole time, every time you see him, you say, yo, I love you, man. I appreciate everything you did. And that's all the words you got from him every time you see him. That person feels a lot different now after he's done, after he's gone. The person who always held it in, the person who always wanted to, be cool, you know, try to keep their pride and all of that. And they waited till it was too late. They're probably doing the most, have the most pain right now. Similar to how was shot. When he returns, he don't want to hear how much you love him. The scripture tell you some will say, Lord, Lord. And the was shot say, I don't know you. Get from, or get from hence. I don't know you. You know, you didn't do the will of my father. I don't know you. So now's the time where Yahweh Shah from the heavens is looking at us and watching. You think he's stupid? You think he's not going to know that you wasn't on his side? That you wasn't waiting for him? That you dismissed his men? You think he's not going to um, judge you for that? The scripture says every idle word man shall be judged for in that day. All right. And so right now is the time where you, are, um, you keep the sayings of the prophecy. All right. Not taking the mark of the beast. Right, going out in the highways and hedges and teaching to the best of your ability, keeping all these laws, statutes, commandments, fighting the good fight of faith, and waking up the flock, man. That's our job, that's our duty, that's our lot. Because we know that Yahweh Shah is right around the corner. And with that, Lord willing, this video is edifying. Ours always, always is for the elect, nobody else. All right? Shalom. Till next time.